I want to learn things. I'm always up for new skills and learnings. I've always wanted to do what others can do. I want to be good at something. I'm ever changing and always evolving, always trying new things. Yeah, that's an awesome quote that I stole from Thomas Rhett. But you get the point. The key is to try new things. Try new things. Welcome to this new video which we will call Let's Try. As the title says, it is all about expanding our skills, trying new things, and learning new stuff. As you may not know, I'm not officially a photographer. I'm just trying to be one. And also, not a filmmaker. But again, I'm just trying to be one. I'm just a regular dude with a camera and just tries to maximize the things that I can do with it. So uh, that's why we're doing this. By the way, if you're new here, hi, uh, my name is George. I make videos about filmmaking, photography, uh, tech, design, and anything creative in general. So if you're interested in those topics and those things, consider subscribing so uh, you can join me as we go through this journey to creativity. All right, for the first episode in this series, we're really calling this a series. Huh? For this first one, I will try something that I've been seeing around Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, something that I've been meaning to try and uh, I thought why not give it a shot and um, let's see if I get the feel to it and if I can do it. And that is product photography. If you have been following me on Twitter and on Facebook, I posted a set a while back uh, featuring a uh, product shot of my mom's homemade kimchi and also her homemade Filipino style meatloaf called Everlasting. Yes, it is called Everlasting. Technically, that was my first attempt in doing a product shoot, but it's more of a, a quick setup, more like a run and gun style where I just set up the product, set up light, take a picture and that's it. I even shot that handheld, so I'm not even sure if the images were sharp. So for this time, I thought, why not give it a second shot? An official first attempt in doing a product photography wherein I will be preparing all the things and all the materials that I need in order to pull this off. And also, again, <laughs> featuring my mom's homemade kimchi. So uh, free advertising. And also, uh, stick around until the end of the video for a very, very quick announcement of something that I've been thinking of and something that I've been meaning to do. So stick around. Wait for it, okay? So, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, without further ado, let's shoot this sh Like any other projects that I do, I started this one with, of course, pre-production. Basically, the planning of what I'll be doing so that I would have a clear mind and an ironed out plan of what I'll be doing from start to end. This consists of the concepts of the shots that I'll be shooting, um, how many shots would uh, should I get, and um, what are the materials that I need in order to get those shots. So I started out first with concepts, so what's a better way of having ideas than by stealing other photographers' ideas. All right, all right, let me rephrase it. So basically, let's just say that I was inspired by other photographers and uh, let's see if I can recreate their ideas with the materials that I have on hand, that I have at my disposal. So I went ahead and looked for ideas on Pinterest. So I created this board of ideas to try out. So I don't have enough materials around here to be used for the shoot. So I decided to go for a minimalist approach uh, wherein the products are just there on a seamless background. So uh, I kinda wanna try that. So uh, let's try that one and see if we can do that. So what I'll be needing is a light that is powerful enough to light our subject. Maybe a white cloth to be used as a fill light. Of course, a table for the setup and a roll of paper to be used as a seamless backdrop. So I think that's all that I'll be needing for this shoot. So let's proceed with how I shot the photos. All right, before anything else, forgive me for this because 
I was so excited for the shoot that I forgot to take videos of the behind the scenes and all the process that I did on the shoot. So I'm really sorry. But don't worry, uh, we have here some photos of the uh, setup that I had. So uh, here, as you can see, that's the setup. So I'll be explaining the setup and the whole process through the photos that I have here. Don't worry, I'll still explain it. Let's go through the uh, setup first. So here's what I did. So it's just a basic setup. So we have here our mini table as the set. And then I laid down the roll of red paper to simulate a seamless backdrop. So there are a few wrinkles here and there, but I'll just fix that on post. For the light, so we have here a stand that holds a uh, bulb that is pretty bright enough to uh, light this scene. But then it is diffused by this uh, diffuser from a 5-in-1 reflector so we just use that to soften the light so in this other side as you can see it's pretty dark on the other side so i have there an ironing board that holds the white cloth and acts as a fill light so that the light from our key will bounce to the white cloth and bounce to the subject so it will fill in some of the shadows on the other side but as you can see there's another roll of uh, there's another paper backdrop that is currently attached on the ironing board that is for another concept of the shoot so later on we'll discuss on where did i use that roll of um paper backdrop on that side so um basically that's the whole setup i just played around with different uh, shots and different angles with this setup so that's it it's that's the setup so uh, for this setup i was able to create a few shots so um let's go through each shot and start with the basic product shot for this first one it's super basic i just placed the product on the set and made sure that there are no light glares on the background to make it really seamless and to make it easier to edit in post i'm using the kit lens of my panasonic lumix g7 and i shot it at two focal lengths uh, one is at 25 mil and the other is at 35 so they would probably look the same because i only have a plain backdrop but the 35 would look tighter and more zoomed in so uh here's one of the raw shots as you can see my backdrop is a red one and now let me show you the after so there i opted to make the background orange on the edit i don't know why but i think it looked good also i read somewhere that orange has a certain effect on people when it comes to food um wait let me research it orange tone for food lots of food and beverage companies use orange that's because orange reminds you of hunger and thirst so let's just say that that is my reason going <laughs> so uh going back here's the one that i shot at 35 and again with some editing magic here it is okay let's go with the next one the levitation shot actually this shot was inspired from another fellow youtuber uh hillary buenaflor she made a video and she shot a few bottles of liquor she shot a few bottles of liquor that sounded wrong she made a video wherein she had a product shoot of a few bottles of liquor it was so interesting that i decided to try it out right away so uh, if you're interested in checking her videos links up here I swear her videos are amazing so basically with this concept we need to take two shots one is with the char standing on the other side and the other is with the one that is floating on the other side so that's the two shots and then we'll just combine it in post so what i did to uh, make the other jar float is i held it up like this so it would be easier to edit out my hand so this is the raw shot of the floating one and here's the raw shot of the other so combining them together and we have this all right, so for the next one, this is pretty interesting. So um, let's just call it a uh, punch through shot. This concept is really nice and interesting. So I thought I can DIY my way in recreating it. So what I did is something like this. So I took another roll of paper and I cut it in the middle. So uh, let's just cut this open 
in the middle. Wait, I'll punch a hole through it. So yeah, I uh, I punched a hole through it, made the hole bigger. So there, and then uh, punch my way through <laughs> the roll of it. That's basically what I did. You get the point. That's what I did. So uh, this is the one that I'm talking about a while ago on the setup, wherein there's another roll of paper that is attached to the ironing board. So uh, that is for this concept. So obviously I needed time uh, to hold the jar in place while I take a shot. I used the self timer on my camera so I would be able to pull this off. So uh, I went in as the hand slash arm model for the shot and took the shot and we got this. The raw shot came out with a really worn out backdrop so I had to clean that up and we got this. Pretty good, right? I really, really like this one. All right, so on to the last concept, on to the last shot that we have. Um, this is another style of or concept that I really like to do, and it is flat lay. So for this one, I took some stuff from our kitchen to be used as props. So we have a uh, wooden spoon and fork, a wooden pair of chopsticks, uh, a white plate for contrast, and a wooden chopping board. So it's just a simple setup. So I just arranged and aligned everything on the setup itself. So I really like it when the objects are pretty much aligned to each other on the flat lay itself. So I like it that way. It looks symmetrical on my eye and it's pleasing to my eye. So it's just set up that way. I took a shot and we have this. To this. Alright, so um, just to showcase all the four shots that we have, I'll show them again. So here they are. Watch it again. So uh, enjoy and uh, here, um, there. So uh, that's it. That's the product shoot that I made featuring my mom's product. So uh, what do you think? Did I make it right? I mean, did I give justice to the photos and somehow made some cool images for it? So let me know in the comments down below. But I do hope that you find the photos pretty good because, you know, the main goal here is about trying. And I'm really glad and kind of proud of myself that I was able to pull this off and get through with the product shoot. And also I do hope that I was able to give out uh, some ideas, some concepts, and even an inspiration that you who are watching this right now can do this too. And speaking of trying, let's go to the announcement, the one that I said on the intro. Um, there are a few reasons that I'm trying product photography right now. Well, number one, obviously, is to help out my mom in advertising her products. And uh, number two is to uh, extend my services and help small businesses during this time of the pandemic for free. Yes, you heard that right? For free. Actually, this decision was inspired from Marco Generilio and Luigi Pagai. They already started this um, kind of project. I'm just an additional to the manpower, an additional to the workforce in continuing this project. Now, why am I doing this? Well, first off, there's a huge rise of online businesses during this time of the pandemic. Every person has been thinking of ways to create an income to be able to provide for their families. And since they are just starting out, I think most of the income will be going back to the business itself. So I think hiring creatives and hiring photographers would be their least priority as of the moment and that's why we're doing this don't get me wrong on this um i'm not devaluing the creative industry by giving my services for free um to be honest i never had any freelance work since i started out since i've got this camera and uh, this is one of the ways that i thought i needed to do to be able to extend myself out there grow a network and build my portfolio.
it's kind of a win-win solution for me. You have a business, I'll help you out. Uh, you'll be having photos for your product or your brand and you'll be helping me grow and network and create a presence. Um, you send me your product, I'll send my services back and maybe I'll even give my review of your product. There, I'll be making this available for a few slots at first, maybe around uh, five small businesses. I'm not sure yet, but um, it still depends on my capabilities and on my schedule. So I think five uh, available slots would be a good start. But let's see. Let's see. Consider this video as my pitch to small business owners. So uh, just a quick disclaimer, I'm leaning towards more of a minimalist style of product photography. I don't know why. I just... I think I just really like to put focus on the products itself. So uh, if you like that style, if you like what you see on this video, all my uh, social media links are located on the descriptions below. So there's my Facebook, my Twitter, and my Instagram. If you like to see more posts and more photos of from me, um, just go to those channels and you'll see all my posts. So if you're interested in working with me on this project, just uh, send me a message. I'm um, just a DM right away and let's talk. And that has been the end of this video. So I think it's a pretty good and a successful, somewhat successful first episode on this series. So I really do hope that I'll be able to continue this series and create more episodes under this project. So if you like this video, give it a huge, huge thumbs up. If you love it, consider subscribing. If you have some comments, you got something to say, you know, some comments, suggestions on, you know, some things that we should try next. Um, leave some comments down below and let's talk there. And again, here I am reminding you to expand your skills, widen your knowledge and try something new. Again, my name is George and I'll see you on the next one. So, uh, what should we try next? So what I did to make the jar float is I held the jar like, like this. Like one on the other end and one on the other end. So this doesn't look good. Comments down below if you got suggestions. So again, if... Oh my god, my neck is falling. <laughs>